Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer Thomason. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers and build custom software solutions. So we do a lot of work as a fractional CTO, and with over a decade of executive leadership experience, we love to help companies build custom software solutions as well as to train software developers. So today we're going to be diving into giving you some great OpenWRT tips. I know one of the things that I'm constantly struggling with is when I flash a standard OpenWRT router with the latest 2305, which is at the time the current, the latest, and I'll flash it to it and IPv6 has taken over my firewall. So this is a great little tutorial video on how to disable IPv6. So let's dive in. All right, so let's dive into how we disable IPv6 for OpenWRT. Now, OpenWRT is a great router software, uh, great router firmware, I'm sorry. Um, been using OpenWRT since 2008, uh, back in the old kamikaze days, and have seen OpenWRT come a long ways. For those who aren't familiar with OpenWRT, definitely want to check it out. We have an awesome training kit that we provide for 20 bucks. So if you want a router just to totally hack on, that you can totally mess up and it's really easy to flash, almost impossible to brick. We sell one. There's a link down in the comments down below. So grab that. It's 20 bucks. Seriously. We're not even making anything on these. I just have stacks and stacks of them. And I love to teach people about OpenWRT. So we're going to dive into OpenWRT today. And so this is a router I just flashed. I haven't configured anything other than the password. So I went ahead to set a really easy four digit password. Again, not that I'm suggesting that you should set that easy as a password, but these are these Western digital units that we use. They, these, I haven't sold these for a long time, but we bought thousands of these uh, for clean router. Clean router is a filtering internet that filters for parents. If you want a great router that filters for your kids open, uh, that's based on OpenWRT and the latest security, grab, grab cleanrouter.com. But we're going to teach you a little bit about it today. So just logged in. I literally haven't configured anything. You can actually see, um, you know, the, the Wi-Fi is not even on. Still the default's open up our T here, right? Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up Putty here. And let's bust open Putty. We're just going to go to 192.168.1.1. Now, this is, again, the defaults that come out of the box with OpenWRT. Only I've changed on this is the password. Um, and, and so if you haven't connected with a password and you go to try to connect to this, but it's going to pop up, you always want to say accept. What it's doing is just telling you that the, the handshake, the fingerprint here. So you're going to accept that. It'll set it into your known host for Putty. Uh, your login is always going to be root. OpenWRT is a single user system, which means that it, you, I think you can create other users, but I actually don't know if anybody who ever has. So OpenWRT, you really just use the one main uh, user for the system. So uh, login as is root, um, and then the password that you set, which hopefully you set a password. Now, um, I'm going to try to see if I can make this a little bit bigger here and get my fat head out of the way. Um, so let's put this over here. Now, with this, um, I'm going to actually give you just a very simple set of commands and we can break down what each of these are doing. So one of the problems with IPv6 that I run into all the time is that um, desktops will grab an IPv6 address and this becomes almost impossible to firewall and port forward for. Um, IPv6 is really great for the internet, not so great for firewalls and for uh, firewall routing if you're trying to do port-based routing. Um, and so you can try to go through the UI and do a bunch of this, but one of the great things about OpenWRT is that you can just bust open the command line. So literally, go download PuTTY, right? P-U-T-T-Y, download it. You saw how I connected. Um, and we can just then run this command here. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste this down into the comments here. Um, down in the comments down below. Um, and so this is a great little one-liner script that you can just copy and paste right into here. Now, if you aren't familiar with OpenWRT, what UCI is, stands for Universal Command Interface. And what this does is this is how the, all the configurations, everything inside of OpenWRT is stored into these configurations. So for instance, if I go to uh, CD, uh, Etsy, Config, Network, uh, if I do cat network, you can see the, the, the structure of the files here where it says config, interface, loopback. Go 
globals. And so like uh, this is how it does. So if we say set network dot lan dot um, IPv6 equals zero, so it would be network. So the network file dot lan dot IPv6, and it doesn't even have that one. So um, so you would see that it you know so it's going to add it basically. So set if it doesn't have it is actually going to add it. Um, so it's going to set these values and set basically IPv6 on the LAN and the WAN to zero. It's going to disable the DHCP on IPv6. This then disables ODHCP. So, OD, so you have DNS mask, which is what's handling your IPv4. OD, uh, ODHCPD is actually what's handling all of your IP6, IPv6. So you can disable that. The UCI commit then commits uh, these UCI command lines. You're then going to delete some lines out of the DHCP for LAN and for the RA. This will then commit that. This will disable the service. Actually, it looks like we got this one twice here, so we can go ahead and get rid of one of these. Um, we can disable ODHCP. Um, and then we can stop it from running. You can set then the LAN delegate to zero and commit the network, right? This will then commit everything. Uh, if you do this, you're going to definitely lose your network uh, as it's going to do this. So you can either do this or you can also just, um, so you can say, um, do the following two lines or else just reboot. And sometimes rebooting might be cleaner. but. So what I'm going to do then here is I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to run this. So I literally can copy and paste this into the command line here. You notice that it runs everything. It does complain that the ODHCP restart isn't found because uh, we disabled it, actually. So we don't need to restart ODHCP either. Um, but it did. Um, so we haven't actually restarted the network. So we do this. It's going to actually drop because see radio 1, radio 0 means that my wireless aren't turned on. Um, I'm actually going to lose my connection here now because it's rebooting the or re resetting the network and then it comes back. So now um, if I set up the IF config, see once I, the other part about rebooting is even though that these are uh, the IPv6 here is grabbed and these are set for local, it's not going to actually delegate out those now that we've turned it all off. Um, and so I'm actually going to grab this and just go ahead and, and reboot the whole router. Um, sometimes these routers take a minute to reboot. But when it comes back up, then your all your IPv6 will be disabled. And then on your local client here, um, and I'm going to pause the video here so I can show you once the video comes back up. And after our reboot, we can see that IPv6 has a local IP address, but this is just what gets assigned uh, as the client is enabled for IPv6 but there is no IPv6 address assigned to the client. So we can see that that worked. Um, there's lots of open WRT tips that we're going to be giving in coming uh, videos, so make sure that you like and subscribe. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers and to build a custom software solution for folks. So make sure, sure you check out the link down below. And I also will include this little uh, snippet from OpenWRT on a great way to disable IPv6 for an OpenWRT router. And if you want to get a great router to tinker with, we have a link down below from our eBay store that you can go and buy one for literally next to nothing. Uh, I think it's $20 and free shipping. So um, hit, the, hit us up and we will catch you guys next time. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because we bring you lots of great tutorials and tips that every developer should know. See you next time.